In our previous session, I unveiled how a simple paper bag and fabric transformed into the cover of my four month planner, which I then decorated with elements from my new Autumn Serenity digital kit. Today, I'll add the final touch to the cover, set up the signatures, stitch them into place, and I've also got a captivating book review for you. Welcome to part two of Plan With Me for September. It's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. But before we dive in, I'd like to apologize for the abrupt start to this video. Due to the length of content, I decided to split the original video into two parts to ensure nothing was overlooked. So you can find the first part linked below this video if you missed that. Thank you for understanding and I appreciate your patience. Now let's continue our journey. I dried this with my heat gun and now I'm just going to ink up that top part of the flap, which we're going to see. And I'm going to sew this into my signature. That's the advantage of having the kit before you bind your journal, because this way I have the chance to sew this in here and then glue that closed afterwards. Let me just fold in the flaps. There's one more thing I need to add to this cover. I'm super happy with it already. It has a lot more character now with these floral patterns on top, but obviously it wouldn't be me if I wouldn't add some gold splatters. So this time I'm going to use this acrylic metallic paint. This one is by Coil, which is a German company. You could also use watercolor. This one is just handy right now. So I'll pour a little bit in here so that I can thin it down. Add some water. And I'm definitely going to cover up her face. Let's do this. I'm not going all over the page. I am sticking to one direction. I think that looks nicer than if everything has splatters. And I will also add some on the back. And the spine. And since I have a little bit left over, which I don't want to waste, I can also add some to these papers here. And also to some of my planner pages. This one is going to be the cover page for September, so that definitely needs some. And then I can add some here. That's one of my pages where I'll add my notes. Gold splatters just make everything more magical. <laughs> and finally on this one. Actually, I can add some here as well. Since I still have a little bit left, I'm also going to add some to some of my ephemera, because why not? I just quickly dried everything with my heat gun and I see now that I do have a little boo-boo here. This white paper that I used to cover up her face had moved and stuck to the acrylic paint. So now some of that tore. So I'm just going to fix that by going over that with a little bit more gold. I am so happy with this new cover. Love the touch of grunge and character that it got through all of these little steps that we added. This is what the gold looks like on the pages. It is just so magical. It, I think it totally elevates the page. So 
So now it's time to put together the signatures. I'll have four signatures, one for each month of the rest of the year. And I always add four full pages. So A4 page folded in half to each signature. So I already have four of these folded, four piles here. And then I like adding some odd things in between. So our envelope is going to go obviously in the first signature. Then I have like these random papers that I want to add. I'll add one of these, I think also to the first signature. Some paper bags, I'll use this one. Yeah, and distribute the rest in the signatures. This is just some random stenciling I did with an acrylic spray. Most of this will get covered up. I'm totally fine with that. So I'll put these within each other. No, I don't want this one on the front. Let's turn that around. So most of these are going to be covered with my printables. So this is the title page. I'll glue those on later. I'm first going to add the rest of my ephemera. So I can now fold this up. And then I'll fold this down, leaving a bit of a gap here. Oh, I see now I should also ink up these edges and this one here on top. So I want this to go in, do I want it in the middle? Maybe I'll just add it to the middle here. So that means I'm leaving this open still and I will stitch right through here. And once it's stitched in, I can then just close this here and that way I will have my envelope in here like this. Then I'll fold this in half. And I have the option to cut this open or not to have a second pocket on that side. Let's put that maybe in here. And then I have this one here. Or actually, let me use this one because this one has the designs on both sides. These are just some papers I tore out of a photo album that I found at my Goodwill and that can go right here. And then I'll put together the other three signatures in a similar way. So I'll just put one into the other to start off with. And then I'll add some of my other papers. Maybe one of these. Maybe let's fold it more irregularly so that we have a weird shape. Like that. And I have this paper bag. I think this is from Louisa. <gasps> Always so happy to have something from Louisa in my journals. It's so special. Signature number three. We'll add the second one of these. Put that in the middle. And we'll add this piece. And finally, the fourth signature. I have another paper bag. And another one of these.
And next I'll add my digital papers for this month. I've already done all the stamping. I did mess up here, but I'm just going to ignore that. <laughs> so I've stamped all my weeks and they are ready to go. So I'll just glue all of these on before I sew them in because I think that might be a bit easier. And I'm just taking my art glitter glue and putting some glue on the edge of my printable. I do always cut these down a little bit since I want the edges of my coffee dyed paper showing. I do have to cut these down. They work out fine if I print them with the border that you usually get when you print. If you don't tell it to print borderless, that makes the height work perfectly. And then I cut off approximately maybe two centimeters or something in the middle so that the width works. So basically this would have been approximately like this and I cut this middle piece out. So I'm going to continue to add these to my pages. And I have already also inked up all of the edges of my printables. You could use double-sided tape. I just think this is a lot quicker. And I also like leaving some pages blank to add some other things in later. So for example, I will leave this blank. There's enough pages for me to do that, but it always makes sense to <laughs> count your pages before you leave anything out because once they're in, they're in. This one I will leave as it is as well. I do have enough pages. I don't actually want to cover up all of this. I don't know yet what I'm going to do here, but I'll leave that open for now. This is really portraying fall vibes for me, don't you think? And the blue is maybe a little bit foreboding for winter coming. I'm so happy with this. By the way, these are printed on regular copy paper. It's not the cheapest copy paper, so I do pay attention to buying high quality copy paper for my prints. I think that's perfect for journal or planner pages. And I do change the quality to best quality rather than the standard quality that my printer would print by default. I think that's a very important tip. So maybe if your prints are a little more pale, that's something you can look into. I would first check the settings when you print to make sure you're printing the best quality. And if that does not give you satisfying results either, then I would switch your copy paper or maybe even upgrade to matte photo paper, which is definitely more expensive. And I would not print these kind of pages for my planner on the copy paper. So this print here is on the matte photo paper and it does make a difference, but I don't see the need to print my planner pages on that kind of paper. I know some viewers think that it's the fault of their printer when the prints don't come out like they want, but I would say in a lot of cases, it's not the printer. It's your settings and it's the type of paper you use. So before you go buy a new printer, <laughs> please check those other options. This will stay empty for now. So that's my first signature ready to be sewn in. And these obviously I cannot decorate until I have the kits for those months. Another thing I can add before I sew it into my signature is the month. So I always like adding the month here on the front page. I will continue to do that. It is a bit tedious. It would be much quicker <laughs> to just stamp it. But I've done it for all the other months, so I want to keep doing that. It's hard to spell and talk at the same time. B-E-R. <laughs> this is the die I use to get my months. It's by Sizzix and Tim Holtz. And it has a number 661178. 
it is so much quicker than working with a set like this, which I also love. But for my planner, this is just so much better. This one has the number 665924 and has two different sizes of alphabet and numbers. So where do I want this? I think up here is actually not bad. And actually, I was going to line this up, but actually I think it's kind of fun to have it all quirky like that. Why not? Yeah, I like it. So I'll just use my metal tipped art glitter glue and glue that on. You do not need to watch me do that. So finally, I can sew in my signatures. I'm just going to sew right through the spine. You can also sew through another piece of fabric, for example, and then just glue that piece with your signature sewn in into the spine to have a hidden spine and to not see your stitching here on the outside. I really don't mind. And I'm actually really loving that we have this more tranquil outside here and then you open it up and it's like, bam! <laughs> I didn't think I was going to enjoy that that much. I have made this temple when a temple. <laughs> I have built a temple. <laughs> I made this template, not quite as impressive, for my first planner that I made this year. And thankfully I was smart enough to keep it so that I don't have to keep making the same one. And I'm just going to use this to poke through my holes. So I just want to make sure that it is centered. So when I fold this, I'm going to position this so that it lays here in the center like that. Then I also make sure to center it lengthwise. I should probably tape this down. I don't want it super sticky because I don't want to tear up my template. And I'm also not covering up the holes. Then I'll just go ahead and poke my holes. So when I made this template, I measured, I think it was one and a half centimeters between the rows of holes. And I have seven holes per row. You could also just do five if you want to do a five hole pamphlet stitch, for example. I probably wouldn't just do three with a size like this. I feel it's more secure when I have more holes, which is why I have seven here. And I'm just going to weave in and out of the holes, starting on the bottom. And then when I'm on the top, I'll just weave back down and tie them off between the last and second last hole from the bottom. So I'll just go ahead and I'll poke all of my holes. They are a bit hard to see from the inside. Also from the outside, so this is going to be interesting. <laughs> I'll take my template, put it in the middle of my signature, which is here. I'll make sure these are all lined up. I'll make sure this is not so sticky. And then I'll just tape this down. I'm clapping these together just on one side. I like to have a little bit of flexibility and then I'm going to add my template. It's already folded here. I already have this mark here from doing it last time. So I know I need to line up this mark with the edge of my page so that all of my signatures will have the holes in the same height since this template is bigger than my pages. And I just double check that that actually makes sense. Yeah, so top hole is here, bottom hole is here. That makes sense to me. So now I just need to poke these seven holes. Remove the template. We'll find a thread. So these are my embroidery threads. I want a blue that matches this blue, kind of like a dusty blue. So either this one or, oh, I think I like that one better. 
What about this light blue? Oh, that would be even better. Yep, it's going to be this light blue. Even though the end is here, I'm not going to pull on that because that's going to make a complete mess. So I need to pull this out through the middle here. So if I pull on it slightly, I will hopefully see which one of these threads has more tension. So I can see which one it is. Oh, I think I see it. Yeah, it's this one. So I'll pull this through the middle. And now I can easily unravel this without creating complete chaos. So I'll take three heights. One, two, and three, maybe a little extra. We always like a little extra, don't we? <laughs> and I'll do four of these for all of my signatures. Let's find a needle. This is my beautiful needle book. I was made by my dear friend, Honey, Liebe Grüße Honey, where I also store some embroidery threads. And in the middle here, I have this felt piece where I have all my needles or some of my needles. So let's take this big one here. So as I mentioned, I'm going to start from the bottom and I see now, look this hole. This hole is totally not in the middle of the signature, so I will just correct that. I am not precious at all with this planner because I don't want to stress myself out. <laughs> so I'll go here, I'll find the hole, the first hole in my first row, which is not easy. Oh, but I can feel them from the back. So this is it. So as I said, I'll just keep weaving in and out leaving a tail long enough to tie off. Yeah, I can't really see the holes, but I can definitely feel them. That is very helpful. And then I'll just go back down. I'll go in the same hole that I came out of. And I'm really being careful not to pierce my thread because otherwise I will not be able to pull it tight. So I'm just making sure it's nice and taut before I do this. So I'll just pull it from both ends. And that will make it a lot easier going back and we're coming out here on the second to last hole that's the last one which going we're going to stitch into and now again we're going to just pull everything really nice and tight double check here that it's flush and then I'm just going to make a square knot. So once right over left, and then the second time left over right. And then I like to have my knot right where the hole is, either this one or the one on the bottom. It doesn't really matter. You can also make it in the middle. This is really just detail. <laughs> Checking again that it's nice and tight. And then I can snip off these two ends. So let's take our masking tape off gently. Then let's add glue to these two flaps. And glue this over our stitching. I love this way of adding an envelope. I just never think of it. <laughs> And then I'll we'll fold this back. And there we go. Super fun. So I'll do the same thing for the other three signatures. They're all sewn in. This is what the spine looks like. I love how these colors all match. 
And actually what I see now is it does make a difference to have this flap in another color because look, it just peeks out. It's like a flash of color peeking out and I really like it. So we have first signature. I also love the splash of color in between the signatures. I am very, very happy. I'm not so concerned about these wrinkles anymore. So then I also want to make a spot for my to-do list for the first week at least, together with you. So I want to add one of these tuck spots here in the corner to stick my to-do list into. I did print these on 200 GSM cardstock. I think I love this one. Yep. Yeah. So I'll fold the flaps up, or do I even want the flaps? Actually, I don't even want the flaps. So I'll just cut these off. It does make the pocket roomier with the flaps, which is why I like adding them to my printables so that you have the choice of either using them or just cutting them off like this. Because I just glue this on the two sides, it will give me a tighter fit for the card or tag or whatever I put in here. But if you know you're going to add something more bulky, then I would add it with the flaps. So let's find something that I could write my to-dos on. So I could either take, well, I could take anything, but I could either take one of these journaling cards or even an empty one. I could add my own design on the front, maybe a book image or something. But why don't we just use this tag here where we already added the gold splatters. So I don't like the white here. So let's figure out what to do with that. You could, of course, take your craft knife and cut into this, but that is way too much effort. So I'm just going to take a Tombow marker. This is number 27. And I'm just going to color the white part in. Then I have my stamp here. I also got this in the US years ago. I'll use the focus. I'll stamp that here on the back side. Then I can just add my to-do list here on the back. And I could also stamp focus maybe here. That is crooked, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking maybe, since I want a little more texture, I'm going to do something different. Yeah. Let me cut this off now that I've colored it in. <laughs> Let's ink that up again. And then I'll take my hole punch. And that way I can add some kind of a fiber on top here. How about a piece of this, which is a scrap from the typewriter fabric that we have on the front. Let's fray those ends a bit. And let's find something to tie around that. How about this cute Avril yarn? You can find different Avril yarns on Etsy. Just search for Avril yarn, <laughs> spelled A-V-R-I-L. I think I will double this up. And then I'll just tie these around and that way I can secure my fabric. Like that. And I am much more happy with this now. Always love extra texture, <laughs> extra bulk. <laughs> and now it's time for my book review. Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. 
So this is the third book I have read by this author. I gave Daisy Jones and the Six four stars and the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo I like just a little bit more so I gave that 4.5 stars. So when I saw this at the bookstore I read the synopsis on the back and had to read it immediately. <laughs> So by the time Carrie, who is our protagonist, retires from tennis, she is the best player the world has ever seen. She has broken every record and claimed 20 slam titles, and she feels entitled to every single one of them. She sacrificed nearly everything to become the best with her father as her coach. I totally love her father. But six years after her retirement, Carrie sits at the 1994 US Open watching her record be taken from her by a brutal, stunning British player named Nikki Chan. So at 36 years old, Carrie makes the monumental decision to come out of retirement and be coached by her father for one last time in an attempt to reclaim her record. And by the time Carrie retires from tennis, she's the best player the world has ever seen. Even if her body doesn't move as fast as it did, and even if it means swallowing her pride to train with a man she once almost opened her heart to, like her, he has something to prove before he gives up the game forever. So in spite of it all, Carrie Soto is back for one epic final season. I did not love Carrie Soto. She's very crude, but under that ice queen facade, she's lonely, she's sensitive and insecure. Each chapter keeps you on your toes and you feel like you've been transported to the tennis matches, sitting on the benches to watch the games with your heart in your throat. Let me just share a section from here. Like one of these scenes where we follow the tennis match. It's just so good. Here's one from the Australian Open, 1995. I position myself on the court and Cortez's shots start coming at me again. No sign of slowing, running me left to right, playing each one she can to my backhand, knowing I don't have the energy to run around the ball to play the forehand. I run, I hit hard. I get points off her, but it doesn't matter. I can't break her serve. We're now at 5-6. If she wins this game, she wins the match. Carrie, do not lose this. I take the next point. 15 love. Her point. 15 all. Her point. Her point. Match point. I serve it low. She returns it down the line. Don't let them all be right about you. I hit a drop shot. I can bring this back from the brink. She returns it short. It bounces once. I run, but before I can reach it, it bounces again. I'm overwhelmed by the downpour of dread, as if the sky has opened up and rained shame. Cortez wins. I'm done at the 1995 Australian Open. How can you not sit at the edge of your seat reading this when you're really rooting for Carrie? It's just so good. <laughs> it was so much fun to read this book because it gave me such summer vibes. And since I also played tennis myself since I was six, I can very much relate to a lot of these scenes. Not that I was the world's best tennis player. <laughs> and what also made this read really so special for me personally was the fact that I'm currently actually living in the apartment next to the apartment complex where I grew up in. And my current garden, it's the garden from the house, it's not my personal garden, borders on the garden and the tennis court of that other complex, which is the court I played on for many, many years. So when I sat on the balcony and I was reading this, I could sometimes hear people play on that tennis court. I mean, how special is that? So this was super enjoyable and I'm giving this four stars. Would I have enjoyed this book as much if I was not into tennis at all? Honestly, I'm not sure. So I'll add this book to my very, very chunky current planner that I'm still working in. It's only my second book. Oh no, in four months. <laughs> I can never draw these stars well, even though I see the outline. <laughs> you know, I printed it in white here and yet I cannot do it. <laughs> 
by the way this sheet is also available i will put that for you below this video usually you can correct most of your wonkiness by coloring them in <laughs> If Autumn Serenity resonates with you as much as it does with me, consider exploring the links below to get your own. I'd be thrilled to see your unique creations with this kit. If you share on social media, please don't forget to tag me. Love you guys! Mwah! Mwah!